get better bodybuilders. The little one is off to school now, and I am uh, out for a walk. Now, I looked at the time. It's, it's kind of hot. I usually like to walk after the sun goes down, but that's when I'm doing homework, unfortunately. Or before the sun comes up, but that's when he's still in the bed. So, <laughs> although time freedom is nice, if you got a kid, that freedom ain't so free. <laughs> you still have limitations and restrictions, but still, I was looking at the time, and I think it's like, uh, what is it, like, yeah, 10.09. And I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, look at, uh, guys, I got my weights on. I got my, my belly thing packed up here. Got my waist trainer on. Of course, I got my thigh burners. And I got my, um, I hope y'all can see it. Got my Kango jumps with my compression socks. Yes. Next time I'm going to have one of those big old Mexican hats uh, to protect my face from the sun. But um, I was just walking and thinking to myself. And I was like, wow, it's 10 o'clock. You know, I remember when I used to work for the state of Georgia. And um, by now I would have been at work probably about, I don't know, two or three hours. I would be running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get into the high schools to speak to them about getting free money for college. None of the students wanted to hear it. None of the administrators wanted to let me in because it meant they would have to reschedule their day and God forbid they do some work. Um, and I'm not trying to knock everybody in higher education, but I saw some really crazy things, y'all. And it's, it was I, it was a huge eye-opener to me. I always say that God let me have that job so that I could see how to better protect my son when he becomes, uh, you know, in, in, of high school age. Because it was shocking to me how many administrators, how many principals would block me from coming in their schools to tell the students about free money. Because the program that I was over, it was free money for the students. But, of course, we all know free money ain't free. So the money had to come from somewhere. So... The kids could go for, to college early for free, and they didn't have to be super smart. They had to at least be a C student and pass the test, but they could go to college for free early. But it would take money out of the high school's pockets because um, high schools, I don't know if y'all know this, but the high schools, public education, the schools are funded based on their enrollment. So if I took one of their students and put them in my college, the money that the state would give that high school for housing the student, that money would then be routed to me. Hey, what's going on, Diane? Uh, to me at the college. So the high school administrators didn't want that. So here, here is my point in telling you this. There were a lot of students that were lied to. There were a lot of parents who didn't know. They felt like, of course the teacher, of course the principal is going to do what's in the best interest of my child. And they didn't know that that teacher and that principal was doing what's in the best interest of the test scores for that high school and the, what they call the FTE, full-time enrollment, the full-time enrollment funds of that high school for their budget. Um, so it was a fight, y'all. And I got so frustrated. I used to love the kids, but I did not like work. I didn't like the adults. I didn't like the parents. I didn't like the administrators. And I used to work my butt off. Going from this school to that school, fighting to get in. And them saying, oh, we forgot to put you on the schedule. You didn't forget. You did it on purpose. Well, come back and, and we'll talk again. And, I, and then my boss would be like, did you get in? Did you get in? I'm like, no, they canceled again. And then she blamed me. Like, I wasn't doing my job. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Do you really think... That these people are going to let me in if ultimately if the kids want to do what I say to do, then it's going to take money from their budget. But how many of you have bosses out there and you know your bosses all the time? They're not the boss because they have the most sense. <laughs> and they're not the boss because they have great leadership skills oftentimes. So I used to work my butt off, y'all. And then when I would finally get off of work, I would have to come home and bring work home and answer all the reports that I didn't, all the emails that I didn't get a chance to answer because I was running around at the schools trying to get in. It was just horrible. It was so horrible. It was so horrible. I never used to put my son to bed. At the time, um, the man that I was married to, he was working nights. I was working during the day. We never saw each other. When we did, we were fighting because we never saw each other. It was horrible. And uh, I'm just thankful that now, I'm not saying I'm rich, I'm not saying life is perfect, but I'm thankful that at 10 o'clock in the morning, on a Tuesday, <laughs> I don't have to deal with that crap anymore. I don't have to. I, there, there is a better way. I found it. I'm thankful that six years ago, when I first got into this, this profession, and I thought it was for losers and, and lazy people, I'm thankful that, you know, my situation made me put my ego to the side and say, okay, 
I have found a great mentor. My boss doesn't help me do anything. My boss blamed me for everything. Now I found somebody who says they're going to show me how they did what they did. I found somebody who actually, when I call, they pick up the phone. I found somebody who knows way more than me by evidence of the fact that he's making a half a million dollars a month. I found somebody that under normal circumstances, if I go up to the CEO of a company and I say, hey, can you show me how to make money? They're going to be like, get out of here. But with this profession, I found somebody that when I asked for help, they actually gave it to me. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't always like the answer they gave. Because <laughs> a lot of what they said was true. And how many know, how many people know the line in the movie? You can't handle the truth, right? A lot of times we can't handle the truth. So my first mentor told me, I had, Kim, you got to do a lot of work on you. You got to do a lot of work on you. And I was like, what you mean? You didn't even graduate? I, in my head, in my head, I ain't stupid. <laughs> but I was like, what you mean? You didn't even graduate college. I got a master's degree. Who are you to tell me that I, that's the ego, right? Edging God out. Forget the fact that he didn't graduate college. Forget the fact that I had more formal education than, than him. I was making $40,000 a year and he was making $500,000 a month. <laughs> I would say he had something to teach me, right? So, of course, like I said, I didn't say that. But the ego, the mind initially thought that. And I'm so happy that six years ago, I didn't give up. When people laughed at me, when my friends didn't support me. Um, I have a supportive family, so thank God for that. But when my friends didn't support me, when strangers ran from me, when they avoided my phone calls, I wasn't in, this is not my first company, this is my second product company. But when strangers hung up the phone, when I felt like, God, I'm doing all this stuff, and it's for nothing. In, 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 in my free time, and I use that very loosely because I didn't have a lot of free time. I just told you that. But in my free time when my friends were like, hey, you want to go out for drinks? You want to do this? You want to do that? And I was like, no, I got, a, I got a business meeting. I got a business presentation. I got to meet with somebody to show the plan. I'm thankful. And back then, guys, you know, I was like, this, this is grassroots network marketing, okay, that I was doing. Feet on the street. Belly to belly. Eye to eye. All this stuff, right? Made it sound like sex. Belly to belly, toe to toe, eye to eye. You like. <laughs> but basically, it's just a way of saying do business in person. And back then, doing business on per in person versus doing it electronically like how I do now, it was a lot harder. Y'all don't even understand the opportunity that I present to y'all when I ask who wants to make some money. And that's the only reason why you don't take advantage of it. Like, I, t I totally, I totally get why people don't respond because people think, well, if I'm working 40 hours and I still don't have enough money for my bills I still don't have enough money to send my child to school or do this or do that then they think to themselves how in the world are you gonna tell me Kim that I can work 10 to 20 hours a week and get more or half even of what I'm doing to work for like I get it I, I know the math that you're doing in your head it doesn't make sense mathematically but the whole thing is when you are adding when you are used to just the subtraction and multiplication I mean subtraction and, and, and addition you don't understand multiplication. Hey, Loretta. Hey, coach. You don't understand multiplication. So, when you think of the hours that you work on your job, I did 20 hours this week, plus I did 40 hours, plus two hours overtime, you're just adding this plus this plus this equals that. But in network mar marketing, guys, there's a multiplication factor. And I promise you, if you understand the power of multiplication, if you understand leverage, loot, influence, income, oh my gosh, oh, changes the game on this thing. You're not only getting paid on your efforts, but you're getting paid on the efforts of other people. You go to sleep and customers that love your product, they order when they get off of work and by the time you wake up, there's, there's money in your account that was not there when you went to sleep. It's an amazing thing. It's an awesome thing. That is the reason why your math don't add up. And you should know your math doesn't add up because when you get your check, it's not enough to cover your bills, right? The check don't add up to what the bills are. So if what you're currently doing is not meeting your needs, don't you think that you might need to try something new? Am I saying it's going to be easy? No. Am I saying it's going to be quick? No. I didn't say this time last year. I said this time six years ago, I was sitting in a cubicle miserable with my boss blaming me for everything that was going wrong not listening to me for how we could make things right not spending time with my son fighting with my then husband 
because we never saw each other and what we did despite all the hours do you know how how pissed off that makes you and when you working a whole bunch and you still don't have the money you need do you know what it's like <laughs> to earn forty thousand dollars a year you know before taxes and have over a hundred thousand dollars in student loans it's dumb really it's dumb and I watch people who don't have one job go out and get two jobs. I watch people who have two jobs go out and do, get three jobs. I actually know someone who has, lie to you not, four jobs. Four jobs are for four people. <laughs> and if, if what you're currently doing is not working, it would be like, oh, I got a lazy husband. Okay, well, let me go get a lazy boyfriend. <laughs> two. Two guys are better than one. Two guys are better than one. Well, no. If the guys are exactly the same, then, you know, and I'm not advocating cheating. That was a bad example. Anywho, <laughs> all I'm saying, guys, is uh, I was the girl that people did not like to talk to. I was the girl that people thought was stuck up. I was the girl that people thought had an attitude. I was the girl that just kept to myself because I didn't realize that communication is key. Communication, good communication, will give you all the currency you need. I didn't really fully understand that money is not just walking around here on the streets by itself. Money is in the pockets of the people. And until you can articulate yourself and communicate with people and make them have a good experience when they're talking to you, you'll never get any more money. You really won't. That's the problem. The problem is that it's not that your job is not good enough. It's that you're not good enough. But you really are. You just don't know it. And you will never be good enough in that job because that job has a cap. The best cashier in the world is still only going to get paid max $12 an hour. They're not going to be like, you know what? Kim is a stellar cashier. Everybody loves her. They're always on her line. Let's pay her six figures. <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> so if the job that you are in has a cap based on, and they're only going to pay you enough to keep you from walking out that door, but it's always going to be way lower, way lower than what your time is worth. What is your time worth? Only you can say that. It depends on your skills. So if you're not developing your skills, you're doing the same thing every single day. You are telling your job, yes, y'all are paying me the correct amount. I don't care if you don't like your paycheck. I don't care if you complain to your boss. I don't care if you haven't got a cost of living raise in forever. I don't care if y'all go on strike. As long as you keep that job, you are telling them you're paying me the right amount. Because if it weren't the right amount, you would walk out. And they know that. That's why they won't give you a raise. I remember when I asked my boss for a raise and she said I deserved a raise at one point before things got really, really bad and she was blaming me for everything. She was like, I went from being like the best employee, having the best evaluation to her just nitpicking everything. It was one year between I got the best evaluation ever in the world and the worst evaluation. Like they had me like public enemy number one. <laughs> but um, man, I'm telling you, when my boss liked me, she agreed that I needed a raise and that I was supposed to get a raise. And she kept promising me, when this happens, when the budget cycle starts new, well, you know, we're about to get a new college president. When we get the new president, I'm going to advocate for you. And you know what? Instead of a new raise, they gave me a new territory, which meant double the work. No raise. One day when I tell y'all my story completely, it's going to blow your mind. It really, truly is. But I'm just bringing it back around to where I am. It is hot to death right now. But I am so happy and thankful and grateful that I am able to walk, look at the beautiful trees in Savannah, enjoy the abundance of the day, listen to the gnats. I'm happy that I'm able to even experience this heat. I'm happy that um, when my son gets out of school, I'll be able to get him. I'll be able to do homework with him. I'll be able to pray with him before he goes to bed i'll be able to talk to him while he he likes for me to stand outside the bathroom door and talk to him oh my gosh he's so high maintenance stand there and talk to me i'm like yes what is the guy i'm coming to america prince who prince who yes your highness i gotta stand outside the bathroom and talk to that boy but you know what i do it because one day he's not going to want to be around me and one day your kids are not going to want to be around you that's why if you have kids if you have grandkids it's super important that you do everything in your power to spend as much time with them as possible. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. I have a friend whose 15, 16 year old son drowned last year. He would give anything to spend more time with his son. 
My oh, mom's oh. friend two weeks ago got shot in the face in a carjacking experience, and he's right now in ICU. The teeth that they didn't shoot out of his face, they had to pull. The teeth that they did not shoot out of his face, they had the the, the medics had to pull. His family would give anything to be able to have another moment with him right now when he's in his right mind. Y'all, literally, your life can change in the blink of an eye. <laughs> and even if nothing happens to you, and I, I really do, and it's so fun. I was literally, before I called y'all, I was praying for everybody. I was praying for my team. I was praying for my clients. I was praying for my uh, family members. I was praying for those people I just told you about. I was praying for the people that are teaching my son right now. I was praying for the students that are sitting next to my son. I'm praying for the people in these houses. I don't know what's going on in these walls behind me. I don't know. But I was praying for everybody. Because even if it's not you, it could be a family member or somebody that you truly care about and their whole lives could change. And you want to be put in a position to where not only you can pray for them. Prayers are great, but sometimes people need some paper money for those of you who don't speak slang <laughs> sometimes people need some paper with them prayers and sometimes people need your time god forbid if a family member or a loved one gets sick and you you got to rush back to work you can't sit at their bedside and care for them and make sure that the, the, the health care professionals are giving them the right dosage of medicine because they're they're overworking and underpaid too y'all it's a new economy it's a new day and age got to stop thinking that whatever you're doing right now is going to get you what you need you got to stop thinking that the world is going to just bow down to you because you got 10 kids 20 kids 30 kids because you got four jobs because you were in an abusive relationship and god knows i'm not saying that any of these, these things are not important what i'm saying is every single time you experience pain it's god trying to push you to become a better person he wants to push you in how to effectively deal with that thing, that situation. I tell y'all all this all the time. I don't need to know what your situation is. I know what the word of God says about you, and that's enough. But you got to stop thinking that because you don't have the budget, that the price of the products is going to change. You got to stop thinking that because you don't get paid a lot, that your bills are just going to disappear. They're not. They're not. It's up to you to become a better person to get better skills so that you can get more pay. And I'm telling you for a fact, it might not come the way you thought it did. I just knew, I just knew that that college president, when I first got that job, who was singing my praises, was going to promote me and pay me when I was working, all that stuff. But when we got a new college president, and that, that sucker turned around real quick. Their perception of me turned around real quick. Cause here the new guy is, he's trying to make a name for himself at everybody's expense. He don't like you, boom, you're gone. Boom, they're giving you hell. Because he's trying to come in and be the new man on campus and show everybody they're going to turn this ship around. Guys, it is really real out here in these streets. Some of you I've spoken to, you got quote unquote good jobs, but you hate your boss too. And you have no time with your family. It's not going to change. I was listening to somebody who was saying they were having problems in their marriage. They went to marriage counseling and the counselor just basically candidly asked them, hey, you got two choices. You can stay in your current situation and fix these problems or you can get in a new situation and get a whole new set of problems <laughs> and I like he said whoa when he said it like that I thought about it and said whoa I, I may as well fix these problems that I already that I created and that I already know instead of getting a whole new set of problems it's the same thing with your job guys it's a new day and age most most jobs are being outsourced the ones that remain oh you best believe they gonna work you you gonna earn your keep baby okay so if you think that the remedy, the solution, is to just go get another job, look at how many people are, have been through. Uh, uh, uh. Just ask your friends in seven years how many of them have changed jobs. It's not like it used to be. Somebody used to, be, back in the day, people used to stay at a job for 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years even. It's not like that no more. You lucky if you hit 50 days. <laughs> so my point to you is, while I'm out here walking, listening to the birds chirping, getting burnt, Go in the house and have a slim AM matrix shake. Take my supplements. Come to Jesus. Have quiet time. I, I'm not rich. I am. I hate y'all. No, I hate. I, I am rich, but don't y'all don't ask me for a loan. I'm rich in the spiritual realm. I'm manifesting that richness in the physical realm. Okay? 
But my point to you is just that um, I would physically get ill on Sunday nights before I had to go to work. I would physically feel sick to my stomach. I did not want to wake up in the morning because I hated my job so much. And they were just trying to make me and my co so miserable because they were trying to force us to quit. And I was looking for another job. And how do you look for another job and put down, don't contact my current employer? They'd be like, well, what, what's up with who? You know? <laughs> you know? I'm just happy and thankful and grateful that despite my ignorance, someone still introduced me to this profession. And I'm happy and thankful and grateful actually for all the pain I went through. Because if what I thought was going to happen at my former employer, if I had climbed up that corporate ladder, Got in that corner office, got in that title, I per- chances are I would not have humbled myself and subjugated myself to this system that is known as network marketing, the virtual franchise model. I would not have developed better skills to communicate with people. I wouldn't be so interested in human psychology and, and consumer behavior and things of that nature that now they keep me up at night. What used to keep I used to go to that corporate job, okay? With NBA behind my name on that on that business card, and now we get home and watch reality TV <laughs> in higher education. Let me tell you something: some of the smartest dummies in the world are in higher education. <laughs> we weren't required to continue ed- educating ourselves, but in this profession right here, every single day I'm learning about the body, so I can talk to y'all better about my products. I'm learning about y'all. I'm learning about myself. It's a non-negotiable. I have to do it, and I'm so thankful that the pain of my my situation made me finally break down and say I don't want to not know my son I don't want to have time for him only when I retire I don't want to lose my marriage which I did not because of this this profession but that's a whole nother story for another day like I said one day when I tell y'all my story but I didn't want to um but more than anything more than anything right because you can't do this for you other people right more than anything I didn't I didn't like who I have become I have become a person who had forgotten their dreams. I have become a person that was very negative. I have become a person that was justifying fussing at people because you don't know my situation. You don't know my situation. Nobody cares, you know? Nobody cares about your situation because they got a situation of their own. And I've become a person that I didn't recognize and quite frankly, a person that I didn't like. And I knew that the longer I remained that person, the more those bad habits were going to solidify themselves and concrete themselves in my life like the foundation of a house. So I'm so thankful for this profession. I'm so thankful that the house is right here. (laughs) And I'm going to get in here, like I said, make my shake, have my time with the Lord. I got a one-on-one session with one of my teammates to talk about where they are in their business and how I can help. Why? Because I had somebody help me, and it's only right that I do the same for my team. So... Thank y'all for joining me, keeping me company on this walk. I strongly encourage you, if you don't like something that's going on in your life, do something about it because the time is going to pass anyway. Six years ago, if I had not joined this profession and today I was still sitting there complaining, ooh, they get on my nerves. Guess what? It would only be my fault. It would be my fault because I was given an opportunity that I didn't maximize. So, guys, y'all have a good one. I'll talk to you later.